My man, Ephraim Salam is joining us right now, 13-year NFL veteran. This is my guy. And when I tell you, like, I've met a lot of people in this business that I admire, that I love, that I respect. But Ephraim is definitely at the top of that list when it comes to that, man. 13 years in the league, obviously, we worked together over at uh, Fox Sports. Mm -hmm. We had a radio show together on Fox Sports Radio for a while. Hit show. Hit show. Uh, and this guy is just an incredible person, incredible human being, incredible husband and father. He does it all. He is the oh, example. Dude, I, he's yeah, a, I love this, man. Yeah, no, he, <laughs> uh, 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 this. Uh, quick story, quick story. Now, obviously, I'm divorced. I just got divorced. <laughs> <laughs> but Ephraim is the reason why I got married the last time. It, it, Ephraim is the reason why I met Cynthia. Yeah. Um, yeah. thought that was the one. <sighs> yeah. Struck out again. Ah, well, you know, it's, it's they said the third time's a charm. I said three strikes and you're out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I thought I thought so too, bro. That's the reason why I married. But anyway, things happen. We're still cool. We're still good friends. But Ephraim, when we was doing a radio show together, I don't know if you remember this, but you're the one that said, "Hey, man, you know, uh, would you go on a, a dating show?" Remember you yeah. asked me that. Oh yeah, yeah. You remember that? Yep. You said you had a producer friend. Yep. And she was looking for somebody to go on Steve Harvey's show. Called me and was like, hey, dude. I was like, I think I got the perfect guy. Mm. And I called you and I said, would you be open to dating uh, one of the real housewives of Atlanta? You were like, uh, which one? <laughs> which one? <laughs> Damn, and, and, and I was, I, I was like, Cynthia Bailey. He was like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Set, set that up, set that up. Set that up. So, you know, and look, I... I thought the rest was history, uh, you know, but uh, look, life is full of experiences. It is, man. Right? You take the good, the bad, you can learn from every experience. And, you know, that's relationships. It is. It is. It's history. And, you know, but you, you've you been able to carve out a, a great career for yourself, but also a great relationship with your wife, Renice. How long have you guys been married now? We've been married 17 years, been together 20. 17, 20. Wow. And she used to be a, a, a dancer for she Beyonce. She was a dancer. She was one of the best dancers in the world. She danced uh, with Beyonce, Destiny's Child, Ricky Martin, Usher, Rihanna. She toured the world, you know, for 12 years. Wow, man. Awesome. 17 years together, man. How the kids doing? Beautiful. And you're coaching, Beautiful. you're coaching? I coach, uh, ba- I'm, it's basketball. I have two games tomorrow. Okay. So I coach my minors, which are uh, my 9 and 10-year-olds. And then I coach majors, which are 11 and 12-year-olds out in uh, uh, in, in the Valley. And uh, we got a good team, man. We we, we work. We have a, we have a model. Mm-hmm. Right? We have a team, like, saying. What is it? If they don't score... And then the team says they don't win. Oh, so you 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 practice defense. The you first thing defense. we learn, okay. especially at that age, is defense. Okay. Because when you – defense is all effort. Mm. Defense mm. is all effort. You don't have to be the most athletic. You don't have to be the tallest, the fastest. It's just effort. Right. When you get kids at that age, you get different levels of athletic ability. You get different le- levels of offensive output. Mm-hmm. Of of basketball IQ, mm-hmm. so I focus on the defense because you can win games fifteen to four. Yeah, well, that 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 pretty right? much does so it. Yeah. <laughs> you have to give kids who who may feel it be intimidated about the offensive aspects of games. Like you got to dribble, you got to get past the defender, you got to pull up, you can't travel, you got to shoot a jumper. All of these things may be a little daunting for some kids who haven't had as much exposure and practice in in basketball. But you can say, hey, this is your area. Anybody in this area, you can't let them get past you. How hard is that to do, though, to to, to – Focus and to preach defense to these kids who see the Steph Curry's of, of the world, the LeBron James. They want to go out there and they want to score the baskets because that's where the glory comes. Yeah, the glory comes from that. But I said the biggest glory is winning. Mm. Mm. So if you want to win, then you can't allow them to score more than you. Mm. Right? So we'll have one or two, sometimes three kids who can really go. Okay. Like they can go. They can break down the defense. They can hit the open man. They can do some special things. But as a whole, 
we have to be a defensive minded team because if we put that press on you, mm. so you like Nolan Richardson. Hey he man, has... we going after you. Okay, all right. So we generate easy offense because we get turnovers. We can't. We don't let you cross half court. Wow. So we we get turnovers and that's easy layups. That's first thing you should, the first shot a kid learns is a layup. Y'all frustrating the hell out of little kids. Hey, now. But but little this, kids on the other team they frustrating him. Like, no, but, I can't get a pass half court. But the, I hate them. The, the thing I've learned and parents, parents have had they've tried to Richard Pryor toy me. Ooh, ooh, what's that mean? Right. Mm-hmm. So have, you remember that? Yeah, the, I remember the, the toy. Movie, the toy, yep, right? Uh-huh. Where they hired. The, the man hired Richard to be his to, toy to come a grown man be with the kids mm-hmm. at the home. Yeah, and so they would come up to me and be like, "Hey, oh my God, we love you." Um, he doesn't listen to anybody but you. <laughs> Can you come? To, what, no, I'm not coming to your house. I have kids. My kids are right here. I'm not, well, I'm not coming to your wow. house. To, I'm not coming to your house to to, to be with your kids. Mm-hmm. But it's just the the respect that that you have to give when you're part of a team. I, te- I'm, I always tell the kids, look, I'm teaching you basketball, but these are life lessons. I love it. Through the lens of basketball. Mm-hmm. If you sh- give effort, if you work and you work within a team, not only here, but anywhere in life, you'll be successful. That, that's a, a great lesson to have right there and to give them to – Show them at an early age because yeah. they gotta they got they gotta grow up that way. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on, obviously, we talk about sports because we we did you know we do the sports, but we talk about life. Life, Even baby. When we was on our radio show doing. <laughs> we t- I think we talk more about hey, things the, outside of radio. Why they took it away? From <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is sports. <laughs> we'll talk about, it. but I think part of like I think sometimes like life. Uh, parallels, sports, yeah. like you just mentioned, like you know you, your life lessons. You can learn so many life lessons from the game of sports. And and one of the things that I like about you is that when we talk about the running back situation. Sometimes you got to be, you know, you got to be able to adapt. Mm-hmm. You got to be, a, and you've been able to adapt in a lot of ways, man. So after your football career was over, you went into broadcasting, mm-hmm. great as a broadcaster, and now you are a writer on a <laughs> hit TV show. People don't realize Ephraim Salam is one of the head writers mm-hmm. over on Bel Air, which yeah. is on Peacock, which is going into his third season now. Yes. It um I I love it. I love being creative. And my mentor, Chris Collins, who got me into television writing, my first show was a show called uh, The Continental, based mm-hmm. on the hotels in the John Wick movies. Mm-hmm. Had nothing to do with sports or anything like that. But what he said to me was, you have a perspective on life that nobody in our writer's room will have. And you're always trying to find different voices, different people to, to fill these writer's room that have different life experiences. If everybody went to Harvard or Yale and, 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 and mastered or majored in, in, in writing or theater arts, then you would get the same experiences. You'll get some of the same pitches. Mm-hmm. And I, he said, you've been able to live life that nobody in any of these writers' room will ever have lived. So you can speak to certain things uh, through a lens that no one has has viewed. And I need that. Right. So once I understood that, then you start looking at whatever the project is. I've been to you know five six shows now. And you just try to add value. That's it's it. like being in a locker room, mm-hmm. right? You go to a team, you immediately have to add value or you will be going to another team or going to do something else. Right. So if you take that same mindset of being a collective, being a team with one goal, right? Win the Super Bowl, make the playoffs, win a game, and you take that into the real world, Right, you got a nice team here. Everybody wants to make a good show, so every, there's no ego involved. Right, whatever it takes, you go into a writer's room with that same energy, and you understand the material, and you have, you know, great pitches, and, and it, it it just it just lends itself to it being successful because it, I felt comfortable. It didn't feel like you know I could talk, I could tell yep. stories yep. all day. Mm-hmm. 
So just building out these characters, especially as a you know a, a beloved IP as as Fresh Prince of Bel Air, and, and trying to recreate that. Uh, my man, my man Morgan Cooper for Kansas City. Shout out Kansas City. Mm-hmm. Uh, had the the vision to to redo that, and he did that. You know, sizzle reel and put it on the trailer and put it on 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 YouTube, and the rest was history. But we connected when I met him, and we had some of the same visions of what we thought the show should be. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is back in 2020, so this is pre TV deal or anything. We really talked about this show and what we thought it could be. It meant so much to me in my youth. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it, it, it's been it's been a a, a, a a, a pleasure, man, and a blessing. I, I enjoy it. It's very cathartic. And, and it's a really good TV show. Like I said, it's going into its third, third season, season now. We just wrapped up its second season. Really good show. And um, best of luck. I don't want to get too far into it, but uh, best of luck with everything that's going on with the writer's strike. Boy, you know, I know that's tough. It's cold out yeah, here on it's these really streets, cold. Man. Yeah, Boy, man, with cold. everything that's happening it's out here in out L.A. Here on these streets. I, well, believe me, I'm, I'm insane. You, 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 you on strike with me, too? Uh, first time I've ever been on strike. Yeah, I don't know man. what it means, but I'm on strike. So thing is, man, uh, hopefully we can get these right because they're so important of course. to our culture and everything that goes on and everybody watches all these TV mm-hmm. shows so we need those people in the rooms and the importance of that so hopefully both sides can come to an agreement so we can get back to work very Please, soon. Please, I need to get back to work. Yeah, I these it, kids, you, man. You, so, so, so now that you got this time on your hands, you're just spending more time with the kids, the I, wife. You, you, is 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 uh, uh, Renice? Is she getting you get on Renice's nah, nerves? No, no, look, it's a gift and a curse, right? Because I called you yesterday and I was like, man, you coming? You want me to come to the show? I'm like, I'll come. I'll come. <laughs> yeah, wait, get out the house. He was like, hey, man, I know it's short. No, I'm like, I'm a, what, what, what time? I'm, I said, what time? Y'all don't know. I've been sleeping. I was here last night. I've been in the parking lot waiting. Uh, to get back to work. No, but it's been a gift and a curse because normally I would be, you know, in pre, we'd be in pre-production right now. In July, we usually start pre-production. So we'd be, I'd be over at Universal and we would have been building the show off since May 22nd in mm-hmm. the writer's room. And I would be busy. I would be unavailable mm-hmm. to do anything. It'd be difficult for me to continue to coach my kids. Um, in the summer because of the demand on, on building out a new season and things like that. So this has been the gift and the curse. The gift is I get to really spend this summer with the kids, with the family. Uh, we had all our birthdays in the summer. My 11 year old will be 12 next Friday. So happy birthday, Rashid. And you know, our anniversary, 20 years together, 17 married, uh, was in June. My birthday's in June. My wife's birthday's in June. My youngest son's birthday's in June. Right. So, uh, that's why I really need to go back to work. So anybody out there listening to this, I'm, I'm available. June has wiped out the the, uh, the my, fun. My, my fun. It's just it's completely insane. wiped out the emergency fund. Um, but the curse is, I I'm a worker. I love working. Yes, you do. You, you know, do. I love to create. I love to engage, and so. I, you just gotta. It's the ebbs and flows of life, man. You gotta take the good with the it, bad. It is, and I, I look at it and. and, and Tell me if I'm wrong, but it's all a blessing, to be honest with you, because the fact that you get a chance to spend this time with your family, especially your kids and that quality time with the wife and whatnot, I don't know how much you love your wife and you want to spend time with her. But the kids grow up really quick. I mean, my kids, my youngest just graduated from college. I saw her. Congratulations, Thank you very much, man. She just graduated from UCLA, already uh, on her own, working. And when she comes back home, it's like a blessing. I get yeah, a chance man, to like, see her. Yo, what y'all want to do? And they so like, uh, enjoy this time while you can, I'm man. I'm trying because to hold we on really to it, busy. man. Uh, you know, my oldest, he don't even want me to kiss him no more. He don't. Yeah, when do you stop kissing a, a, a boy? When, 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 now, you can kiss him. I, I think, uh, you're, you're, you know. You my dad get... wanted to kiss me right now. I'll kiss my dad. It's my yeah. dad, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, it, like, that's love. That's See, what we have to do is... We have to start putting rules and parameters on love, mm. right? Oh, well, you got in a certain age, you got to stop. No, man, these are my babies. Mm. These are my babies. Yeah. I, look, man, they. I and I told him, he was like, "Dad, I'm not a baby." Anymore. I said, "Baby, you gonna always be my baby. Yeah. I don't care how old you are. You are gonna always be my baby." That's all, right? That's but that's awesome. a father. We, I'm raising men. Yeah, my wife and I, we raising black men. Right. Right. And so you I want to we want to raise them with love, empathy, respect. Right. Knowledge of self. Mm-hmm. So they can be fathers and, and do the same thing. Eventually, 
us in our community, we got to break the cycle. And I'm glad you're doing that because we need to do more of that, like you said, course, not man, just in our community, now. but over around the world, man, that men can show that type of emotions with one another and still be real men. It's like, I love you. I you know love you. You want to hug me? I, 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 we hugged. We, we hugged. Chest to chest hug. Too. Oh, yeah, we, we, we didn't give we that like, no, brother hug. We, we embraced, yeah. man. I ain't kissing you, though. Bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I love you, but you know what I'm saying? Just, you know, I'm hanging out with my man, one of my best friends in the world, E from Salam. My my mom is going to be so happy that oh, you're on the show. I love mom. My man. mom just loves, she's love like, mom. oh, tell E from I say hello. <laughs> Oh, she just love her to me. I think she wishes you were her son. Well, I mean, it happens. I, you know, <laughs> it, it happens. I just, I, I'm just being me, man. You, you, you're just a great guy, man. You was giving us some some marital advice uh, during the break and how much your, your wife should be your best friend and all that. And no matter what you see, if you can see a stripper <laughs> hanging out, you still got to go home to your wife. I mean, like, well, you, you, got, you, if you look, I and I used to tell the younger guys in the locker room this. So every Thursday, I might be spilling the beans, but every Thursday in an NFL locker room, the teams by position go out to eat. Mm -hmm. And you either go to the strip strip club before you eat or after. <laughs> but it, you going. <laughs> <laughs> you you go and you gonna be there. Well, first of all, the strip club got some of the best wings. Well, there I'm not gonna some eat lemon pepper at the wings. strip club. I like I make it a rule not to eat around open <laughs> butts. Okay, like open I can't, I'm not. I can't what? like butts and 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 burgers. I can't. <laughs> uh, right, like butts. you wouldn't. You wouldn't just be on the table naked at home eating. So why? Like I, I can't do it. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, but you putting your dollars in the, the. The dollars are fine. You don't eat the dollars. I'm not about to. Yo, yo, mm -hmm. on the, no man, yeah, no, 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 yeah, sanitary no. Um, <laughs> uh, but I would tell them like they, I hear them on the phone like, oh no, we going to eat, uh, baby, we gonna be late and we gonna be, we gonna be at the steakhouse all night, and I'm like, well, but they'll hear me. I'm like, yo, we're going to treasures first or mm. wherever, and then we're gonna go eat, and then it's like, oh man, you told your wife you going to the strip club. I said, yeah, fool. Wow. Because you had you had one that understood. Well, because I went to those establishments prior to getting married. Uh huh. We've gone together, and so like it. I'm not going in there. I, to, I got to, it. I'm sorry, Ephraim. I got to do a survey here because who, who's Brock? When you married? Not technically, but okay. Who has a significant? You have a significant. Of course, number. of course. Significant. You, 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 you want to be honest, right? Oh, absolutely. You want to be transparent. You have to be. Have to be. Are you telling your 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 wifey, or your you know that's what we call in the community wifey, even though she ain't your wife, wifey? That you probably would. I'm not a strip club guy, but I would tell her, hey, this is what we're doing. Okay. And she'd be like, cool, have fun. That's good. It's good to be transparent that way, I guess. You well, know. you can't if you're if you can't tell the truth about that. Yeah. Then you're gonna find yourself wanting to lie about more and more things. Here's the problem. Sometimes is you can tell the truth and be very transparent mm -hmm. and be very honest, and then you're still gonna get a lot of crap. You gotta you know, know what I'm you married though. So yeah, that's true. See, that's why I'm you gotta know who you married. Times. That's why I'm you can tell the truth all you want and and fall into a fight. But that's what you marry. And, but I, I, I'm I'm the one that's always been really transparent, been mm -hmm. honest. Hey, this one I'll be at FaceTime, and hey, here's who's here, blah blah blah, and doing all that type of stuff like that in the background, and like okay, hey, hey. get home, and then there's the drama. So it's almost like I'm damn if I do or damn if I don't because well, the reason I, I want to be transparent. I some of your ex girls, so yeah, you you know you remember at my birthday party, <laughs> Man, bro. Yeah, you remember. Woo. We ain't gonna mention names because <laughs> wow. as well, yeah. Feels like there's a story. My here. wife and I were like. <laughs> What is happening? <laughs> and here? we weren't even together. <laughs> we were we were sitting there counseling this girl, and all she could do was be like, <laughs> "I wasn't even with her anymore, man." <laughs> yeah. Wait, is he? Who's he talking to? I'm like, uh, that's just. But I, I look. I say that to say. I said, gentlemen, you're going to walk yourselves into an argument, because we all play for the team. Mm. So you don't know who, who the other patrons are in these establishments. All it takes is, oh, hey, um, my cousin was at so-and-so and saw the guys there. 
And by the time you get home, that news has traveled home. Already. And then now you got to lie again. Like, where'd you guys go tonight? Oh, we went to uh, 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 Fleming's. You oh, know, no, no. This is how it goes. Like, oh, so yeah, did you have a good time tonight? This is how it goes. Did, did, did you have a good time tonight? <laughs> mm-hmm. And, and who, who, was, who was there again? That's when you know you're in trouble. Hey, when, they, when they ask that. So who, who was there again? Look, if you... <laughs> If you, for all of the newlyweds out there, people in, in marriages, uh-huh. if you can cut those little things out, like your phone. If my wife was like, hey, I'm going to run to the store right quick. I don't know my, where my phone is. I'll say, take my phone. <laughs> Somebody, right? Men would, they would throw their phone on the ground they and throw smash it. Out. it. <laughs> <laughs> but I say that to say the amount of weight that 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 you release mm-hmm. from being able to do something like that or not having to hide something it's just it's freeing it's very freeing in a relationship it is man all right let's talk a little sports here let's i'm, I'm here talking to you from salon man former uh, nfl player 13 years in the league you missed this time of year training camps no. training camps opening up the, no nope i i i get anxiety around this time of year why is that i hated training camp well, I mean, most NFL players hate a training not, camp, but you don't miss tra- any not. any parts of the game of football. Like you said, the camaraderie, I love being the in the locker room. Great. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. But being I came part of into team. the league in like the, the late 90s, and training camp was actually really training camp. Like mm. we had six weeks of two a days. Hell. Full practice. Mm hmm. In pads. My first four years, we had it up in my first three years, we had it up in at Furman University. Mm. In South Carolina. And that must be where the devil went to school because that's how hot it was. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, when I co- that's where you vacation hey, at least. Hey, man, you come out of there and the third week of training camp, your head hurt from the helmet. It's 110 on the heat index. And you just, fo- it, 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 it just became like, uh, now being with the guys, mm-hmm. being in the locker room, Knowing that everybody was feeling the same way except for the kickers and 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 the punters, they just goofing around. Yeah, that's yeah. why I don't nobody they, they, be they messing with them. Times. They yeah. just goofing yeah. around over there, kicking balls in the trash can and all of that. <laughs> um, and it's just those long days. So it's a seven a.m. to to nine p.m. day every day. Yeah. You played with uh, Jamal Anderson, right? Jamal, Jamal, my guy, Jamal, Jamal Anderson, Jam, Dirty Bird back in the day. Yeah. Great running back, you know, played until he got injured, ran yeah. out. Oh, yeah. Why don't we see hmm. running backs get the respect they used to get anymore? I know it's a passing league, but yes. they're not getting respect when it comes to getting paid. Why do you think that's the problem? Well, the illusion of quarterbacks like Peyton Manning – and Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, those guys were so great. Like, mm-hmm. Patrick Mahomes is so great. Yep, Joe Burrow. We really still waiting for Kansas City to have a dynamic running game. That's true. They're winning Super Bowls without it. Mm-hmm. Clyde, it was but hilarious. those are the outliers. Mm-hmm. That isn't the norm. Every team doesn't have a Patrick Mahomes. So this notion of, well, we can win without a running back. No, he can win without a running back. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tom Brady can win without a running back. Mm-hmm. But everybody else, y- y- y'all can't win without no running but back. But isn't this isn't this a league that's a copy? In any, any sport, it's always a copycat well, Yeah. League. Yes. So we feel like obviously you got to have a quarterback like Tom Brady or Patrick How Mahomes or Joe Burrow. Yeah, but Two. It, yeah, but there's still a copycat league. And 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 I'm I'm trying to think of the last Super Bowl winner that actually had a great running back. I mean, Fournette with the Bucks, but Tom Brady was still on that team. No, the, the you're looking. It would be probably the Rams, Marshall Falk. I mean, that goes back to, what was that, 99? Yeah, yeah, that was 2000? But this is, this is, it became more of a passing league. So, so when you talk about the argument that you need mm-hmm. that running back. Yeah. And Super Bowl winning teams have not had that running back or needed that running back. Can you see 
and I'm with you, I'm playing devil's advocate. Can you see where NFL teams are saying, well, why are we going to overspend for running backs when other teams are won without running backs that were superstar players? Yeah, I can see it, but it doesn't make sense to me. I don't understand it because only one team can win the Super Bowl. But that doesn't mean only one team has a successful year. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to, number one, I'm an offensive lineman. Right. So I understand what and y'all would rather run block Come than pass now. block. <laughs> yeah, I would rather so, go yeah. forward with yeah. aggression yeah. than back up and wait. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> just, I, I, I mean, to, to me, that, that, that seems simple, right? I would rather go forward. Like mm. when we when we we had our first fifteen mapped out, and the night before the game, we would get our script, the first fifteen plays, mm. and I would. I will look, I just like, please don't be no seven step drop, don't mm. be a pass. <laughs> and I'll look and it'd be like 23, I, I left 23 scat. That's it. empty, empty backfield, four receivers, <laughs> right? Now they know it's pass. I hated starting a game with the pass play mm. because as an offensive lineman, we want to set the tempo. Right. Like I want to be the uh, uh, aggressor. The aggressor. I want to go after them mm -hmm. and not let them go after me. So in terms of having a running back and a running game, I know how important it is for time of possession to be able to grind out those yards, mm. to not feel like on second and six you have to pass the ball. I, I want to give us an opportunity to get four yards a carry. After, after three carries – that's 12 yards. That's the first down, mm -hmm. right? The longer we have the ball, when I was in Houston, the first time the Houston Texans ever beat the Indianapolis Colts with Peyton Manning, we won the time of possession by a mile. Mm -hmm. It was third. They, the game plan was it's going to be 39. We're going to run the ball. On 39. Oh, it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. We were running the ball. As long as Peyton didn't as have the ball, he couldn't Peyton beat you. As long as Peyton didn't have the ball. Yeah, as long okay. as he stood on the sideline, we had an opportunity to win the game. Ron Dane, I believe, had 153 Ron yards Dane. rushing that game. Ron um, Dane. Yeah. It, but that, to me, that's a formula that I can win. Mm -hmm. Because now you get chunk plays off play action. But you cannot play action without running the ball first. That's true. That's true. Talking to Ephraim Slum, talking about the NFL. Uh, I want to go around the league real quick. Uh, obviously, the uh, the Commanders just mm -hmm. got sold $6.05 billion. Uh, so Daniel Snyder, no longer the owner officially mm -hmm. of the team. You ever play for an owner that was just horrible, that was terrible, or just someone that you just felt like, why is he in charge of this team? No, not not in that aspect. I've played for an organization where I didn't think ownership and management were clear about how to be successful. What do you mean? It didn't feel like I was on an NFL team. Cheap? What, what? It, it, it was just the way things were done. What do you mean? So Explain. So in 2009, right at the end of my career, uh, I went to Detroit for a year. Mm. And this was after they went 0-16. And that was my 11th year. No, that was my 12th year in the league. Mm -hmm. And so I had experienced what the NFL was. The highs, the lows, the, the greatness of being a professional athlete in a city, in a, in, 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 in a town. And when I got to Detroit, it was like just going to work. So it was things were being done that didn't lend to winning football games. Mm -hmm. So the guys there, mm -hmm. the Jeff Backuses and uh, Dominic Rayola, these guys who have been in Detroit their whole career, they never experienced what the true greatness of the NFL was. They literally were just going to work because that was part and of the going culture, home. right? The like, time. You didn't become a professional athlete just to go to work. It comes with certain things. The city, the, the, the like when I was in, in Denver, I'd never paid for a meal. I'd never paid for a meal just anywhere. Because, just because they love the, the franchise what? that much. Never. So when you get to a, a place and certain things are happening and you're looking and you've had an experience in the league, you're looking around like, oh, well, this is terrible. 
<laughs> and you know, I don't want to be disparaging. And they're, and, they're, and they're not winning. No, and they're not winning. Yeah. And so it it was just like, huh? Like you can sacrifice certain things to win, but if you don't get those things and you don't win, then you really just punching the clock. You're Pretty punching much. it with, with a hell of a time card, but it, it just didn't lend to the excitement of what the league had to offer. We were talking about early, the, the first segment of the day with uh, with uh, Brockman and everybody was trying to figure out the, the worst owners uh, yeah. in, in franchise sports history. One, one person that we did not bring up was um, the Bengals owner, Mike yeah, Brown. Mike Brown. Mike Brown. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they, they just started recently winning, right, with Joe Burrow as a quarterback, but – Notoriously cheap, right? Yes. Heard so many stories about and, and, and the the hard part about hearing some players, and I know you guys are NFL players, professional players, and a lot of people in the real world don't want to. Oh, you guys get millions of dollars. I can't. Believe. Sometimes if they don't give you proper equipment, they don't give you fresh socks or you know things like that. Some of the yeah. the, the, the essential basics, it can lead to a, a terrible culture. Oh, it, it, that room. is a terrible culture. Yeah. It becomes, uh, you know, dog eat dog. Um, one owner, I, I saw that segment. One owner you didn't mention. What's the what's the the, the lady's name who owned the Marshot? Marshot, right. Mar- 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 yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Good one. A lot of racist owners. That that, <laughs> that, that <laughs> probably would be up at the the, the top of my list because she was just yeah. t- in the media saying the stuff oh, like she uh, she was just crazy. Right? <laughs> like she, she was on. Yeah. What was so, the report that came out? Like, the Cardinals were charged for their food and lunch and at the facility things like that. Y- yeah, that that to me is. That is crazy. Yeah, remember who was it? Was it Eric Davis? Was it in the World wow. Series? Eric Davis got hurt. It was in the playoffs, and I can't remember what it was. They didn't pay for him to come back home. Or what, he was on the road. I can't remember exactly what it was. Yeah, it's been some. It, it's been some some really terrible owners, and you got to realize most owners. This is like a game. It's like Monopoly. Right. Mm-hmm. Most owners have made their money elsewhere, mm-hmm. and they want to come do this thing. Like, it's hey, fun. I'm gonna come buy this. This is team. their hobby. This is, this is your hobby. This is what you're gonna do. And it's like playing a board game at home. But it's a damn good investment. It's I mean, a great if I give you eight hundred million, now, and I make six point oh five billion. Get in there, yeah. If I'm, Donald Sterling bought the Clippers for twelve million dollars, yeah. And he made two billion, and he when ran them like they were. And they they ran him out the league, yeah, and he still to, sold he it for two billion. It. Yeah, and that was like the, I mean the Clippers weren't worth two billion dollars at the time, but um, yeah, that was you know it was what it was. It was some friendship there, and uh, Ballmer came in and overpaid, which is it is what it is. What it did was it raised the value of every. If the Clippers cost two billion dollars, what the Lakers cost? Yep. Yeah. Right. Think about that. If the Clippers, you pay two billion at the time. Mm-hmm. If you pay two billion dollars for the Los Angeles Clippers, the Lakers must have been worth ten billion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I I get it. He in in turn raised the value of NFL franchises. I mean of NBA franchises across the board. Mm-hmm. Um, similar to what this group just did right now with the Commanders at six billion. So now that's six billion dollars. What are the Cowboys worth? Cowboy, I think they, they said the Cowboys and the Yankees are going back and forth. This the uh, yeah, the, they're valued at eight, eight and change, right? But so, I bet if Jerry sold, he'd, he could probably get ten. Uh, he could yeah. definitely somebody, get ten. yeah, because somebody's going. It's going to be a bidding war. Yeah, you would think if the yeah. if the Lakers, the Yankees, or the Cowboys mm-hmm. ever went up for sale, jeez, oh. I mean, with the, what they're worth is one thing. Yeah, Same. but they're going to be who wouldn't want if you can afford that. Who wouldn't want to own one That's of legacy. those franchises? That's, That's legacy. It's yeah. incredible. One observation I made, and I've been doing this show, uh, this is my second time doing it in the last couple of weeks. TJ, I didn't realize he, he burns a candle over there. I oh, did yeah. not, like, the the whole, can, like, the ambiance, the whole vibe, bro. It's real deep but, over there. That's, that's how Rich starts every show when he gets to me. He's like, is the candle lit? It's, it's the candle yeah. lit. Okay, man. So I'm working yeah, on nice, my own nice candle. I, 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 I got a feeling that you light other things on the weekend. <laughs> 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 Ha <laughs> ha
I just get this. I don't oh, know. I, I mean, I why wait for the weekend? I you know, know, why wait for the weekend? You know, you know, fired up. No, I'm just saying know. it's legal. Man. They call it's it a green room for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the, the best part, the weekend. outside, uh, 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 when we went to break, a Laker fan and a Celtic fan having a discussion. The most hilarious, <laughs> intense Fantastic. thing you will hear. And I like, they, they, Ephraim's telling I just Brock made, Man, I made a statement. I said, the Celtics are, are done. They'll never have a team as good as they've had for the last two years. That's all I said. But, and you went crazy. Wait, when you say done, like, like they're not going to make the playoffs? Or no, they're no, not gonna of course be they'll a, make the playoffs. They're not going to be contenders? What did you say? Why would they make the playoffs? Because the East is what? Well, the East is not as strong top to bottom as You're the West. Right. You're absolutely right. Mm. But given that, with the team that they've had, they still haven't been able to win a championship. They were up 2-1 in the finals, and they pushed uh, Eastern finals to game seven. I, I, I think a lot of fan bases would sign for that. They would them, love that. For their would, favorite team. The, the Lakers aren't like that because we only go into the season – for championships, not to make deep playoff runs. That's the difference between Boston and L.A. Oh, oh, I ain't going to get started. The difference between Ooh. what now? Boston oh, and L.A. The team with the most <laughs> career titles? Oh. No, not the most. Uh, y'all tied. Yes. yes. We're tied. Yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah, oh, you, what about the five from Minneapolis? Tied. We're tied. Yeah, oh. those don't count. They do count. They do count. You're not going to count Minneapolis. They do count. You and O'Shea are going to count those five. They do count. They do count. And then you got the asterisks on the one a couple years ago. Oh, the asterisks. Oh, no, 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 it's 17, 17. He said uh, the bucket well, didn't exist. I don't know what world you live in, but it's purple and gold, and it's you not take, like the rest of us. You take Bird, I'll take Magic. We got 27, right? You Mike. take Paul Pierce, yeah. I'll take Kobe. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. We, we right? got that, that's just it's how, you fine. Know, you take, uh, uh, I take Kareem, you take Bill Russell. Uh, Bill Russell. Mm. I mean, hey, look, both both great franchises. Right. Yeah, both great franchises. Course, but there's Yankees only one got twenty seven by the way, though. Mike, yeah, twenty twenty seven. We don't even talk. Yeah, twenty seven. Even though we haven't won in almost I mean, that, fifteen years, that's twenty seven. So the fact that we haven't won in fifteen years, still got twenty seven. That says thing. something. Yeah. I'm just saying. You know, I got <laughs> seven in my <laughs> lifetime. I, I'll admit it. You guys got eleven in my lifetime, so I'm I'm happy with that. Eleven what championships? Overall, yeah. Oh no, and I'm not talking. I'm, I'm talking about just the, my baseball I got team. To see. I, know, I got I'm four saying. for my football team. <laughs> Eleven. I got. Oh, I, I got two for my basketball team. I'm that old that I. I had two championships from the Knicks. I am that old. I was born the year they won that that first championship. Do you count that, that one? I can. I can't even remember it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember it. I know the archives. The footage is so grainy, man. It's just crazy. When so. you go to the garden, you see the Reed the Reed banner on the Rangers. I count the Rangers as a team, yeah. 94. That was, you know, so, okay. yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I got to see 11 at just all in, in basketball, so I'm, I'm happy about that. 11 all in – dang. You see yeah, the 11 yeah, yeah, Lakers? Yeah, yeah. Have the, the Lakers won that many championships? The Los yeah. Angeles Lakers. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and TJ got so many teams, I'm pretty sure yeah, his team is like – Man, you guys with so many teams nonsense is ridiculous. How is it ridiculous? Like, everybody's talked about how many teams TJ has. But let's, let's, let, let's be real and look at this. Now, I'm counting – as my argument being, there's 150-plus college teams, right? I didn't go to a D1 school. So because I, like – well, I grew up in the middle of Pennsylvania <laughs> – so I like Penn State and Penn. It's like, so what? And, and by the way, I, again, I'm not one of these guys who like locks himself in a room on Sunday. Like college football, I love, but I'm like past that point where I'm going to sit there and let a bunch of kids who can't legally drink like ruin my weekend. So I don't uh, like college football is great. I like it. But I, yeah, I like these teams. But if I got some, if I got a party to go to, I'm not going to miss it so I could sit home and watch Pitt play. Uh, no, I'm like, cool. If they win, great. If they don't win, great. Life's going to keep on. He's got the Mets well, in the well, Cowboys. He sounds like he said this a couple of NFL. times. <laughs> <laughs> again, guys. Again. Let me explain this again. again. He sounds like you just go write it down and just read I mean, it off. It's like I got to keep explaining now. myself. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm never going to mess with you again when it comes oh. to your multiple teams, man. That's okay. I like one football team, and that's primarily why we're in the building. So we'll just, you know, we'll concentrate on uh, on that team. What's the What's your team? Well, the Cowboys. The Cowboys, of course. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, two minutes left in the show. Uh, so I, uh, we don't have time for that. Do we have time for that? You want to do it? Yeah, do 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 it yeah, let's do it quick. So the, the NFL, some teams have been rolling out the, the throwbacks that are coming okay. back this season. Some cool, fun uniforms. 
We just want to take a look at some stills, uh, get your guys' uh, opinion on what you think. Oh. I think these Seahawks won. That's, oh, that's, that's the yeah. larger baby. So I think sick. about that. Oof. That's kind of dope. Jim Zorn, baby. That's I good. Like that. I like that. That's dope. That's my era. So, yeah. Yeah. I like that, that that fluorescent green and stuff they be wearing now. I'm like, I don't know yeah, what that they is, are. right? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, wow, yeah. this is, this is yeah. Cleveland going that's with the clean. white, okay. white on white. That's that's I clean, that. right? That's, there. that's real clean. Yeah, that'll almost make you watch them. <laughs> <laughs> I love that helmet. Yeah, is, that like the, that is that a throwback? Too? This is like, the yeah, that, that looks like it's a Baltimore. Division I don't remember the three. Uh, just an alternate. That's an alternate team. uniform. Okay, yeah. yeah. That yeah. looks like a Division three college um, college team. It, it does. I, I'm yeah. not. I'm not feeling that. I like, I like the, the black helmet, helmet though. The black helmet. Yeah, it is. Classic. Yeah, yeah, right there. That's Purple the people, same uniform they were eaters. wearing when we beat them in the NFC Championship. <laughs> yes, I like that. I like that uniform. Yeah, the Morton brothers, huh? Yeah, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, you know it happens. Yeah, they had Mr. Field Goal all season long, and then the Lions. What is oh, this alternate? This is an alternate. Team. That looks oh, like a Greyhound man. bus logo right there. <laughs> that doesn't look like a lion. That lion yeah. does not yeah, look like. Yeah, the lion is that that like eating the wild. Yeah, that, lion. That, that lion looks like Scar, not uh, <laughs> Mufasa or Simba. So <laughs> Scar. I don't know. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.